Welcome to Michelle Sews Again. I'm Michelle. Today's Friday, so you know what that means. It is hashtag Friday Sews. So thanks to Jen in today from today in Jen's sewing room for starting this hashtag. If you're not already aware, it's a tag where um, sewists across uh, the YouTube world um, participate on Fridays and they share a little bit about what they've been working on for the week, what their upcoming plans are, and a little bit about life. So you get to know them a little bit better. It's a lot of fun. I encourage you to go into the search bar on YouTube and look for hashtag Friday Sews and get to know some uh, really lovely people. All right, so today what I'm gonna share with you is a little bit about what I've been working on over the last week, what I have planned to work on, um, and I actually think I'm going to throw out there an August plans, plans for August. Um, I don't usually do like plan videos because I like to change my mind a lot and I'm not saying that won't happen, <laughs> but I figure if I have a plan, <coughs> excuse me, to work against, then, you know, I've got some guidance. Um, and then I'll follow up with a little bit about what's going on in life. Not a lot. Okay. So what have I made this week? Well, I'll start with the first thing. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll have seen that I posted a big, huge piece of fabric. It was, I think it was two yards of fabric that I tie dyed. I actually ice dyed the fabric. It, <laughs> it looks absolutely nothing like my inspiration um, that I was going after. Um, and that came from um, Angie at Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye and I'll link her channel below and I'll actually link the video to the rainbow geode <laughs> that I was going after. I, I've got a lot of practice to do here. Angie makes it look super easy, um, but I'm not disappointed with the way that it turned out. I think I got some really lovely colors. Um, the thing that I love is I'm using the Dharma Trading Company dyes and um, with the ice dye, like the colors kind of split into extra colors. So I think I used too many colors. Um, so I've got to learn how to like rein it in um, a little bit. But I, like I said, I'm happy with the overall outcome. And so I used that fabric to make another Nova midi dress. Um, I've made this dress once before. I don't know why I always do that. Um, I've made this dress once before and I made it in the um, fantastic bright floral fabric that I got from Spoonflower. It was designed by um, The Artworks. Um, you can follow her on Instagram, but if you go on Spoonflower, you can favorite certain designers and I love so much of what she does. But that was my first Nova Midi. I'll insert a picture of that one up here. Um, I get a lot of wear out of that. I'll be honest, when I first made it, I thought that the fabric was what I loved about it and which obviously I do, but the, I've worn that dress several times because it's just super easy to throw on. There's, you know, you just throw it on over your head. There's no closures or anything. And um, I've worn it several times and it's such an easy breezy dress to wear in a hot climate um, that I was like, after I wore it a few times, I'm like, I need more of this. So I used that pattern to make, to, to um, use my tie dye fabric and I'll insert some video or pictures or something of me up here. Um, so you can see how it turned out, but I love it. And I definitely think I'll be making more of these dresses. Just like I said, they're easy to, and quick to make. Now, the one thing from the pattern that I don't do is it calls for um, a double, I forget what they're calling it, but basically it's a lined bodice. The fabrics that I'm using don't need to be lined. So I don't bother with that. And it uses up so much more fabric that I just end up doing a bias binding for the neck and the armholes. Um, and that, you know, that works fine for me. Um, if I did it in a lighter weight fabric, maybe I would line it, but I haven't had the need for that yet. Um, anyway, so I make the, the two tier version, which actually hits me right at my knees because like I've said before, I'm only 5'1". So uh, yeah, I'm really happy with that. I love all the colors that have come out in this tie-dye. Um, the back is really interesting. I'll try and get a shot of the back because um, it's got like some yellow bursts going on. 
I love it. I definitely have some more ice dyeing, tie dyeing excursions in my near future. I bought, uh, I think, four yards of just a white cotton fabric from Amazon. It's already washed up and ready to go. And I bought a lot more dye from Dharma Trading Company. I'll link them down below. And um, so, yeah, I'm ready to get started on some more of that. I actually also bought some bleached linen from fabricsstore.com, which I'll link below. And I'm going to um, do some dyeing on that as well um, because I think I want to make, you know, some type of a maxi or more of a midi length dress um, using that linen. So, man, I just jumped ahead, didn't I? All right, so the first thing that I made was the tie-dye Nova Midi. The second thing that I finished was my second Wilder gown, and this is my second look for the So Recreate the Look Challenge that's hosted by, um, I'm going to put their names up here, um, Jen Leg Creatives, I don't know if I'm saying that right, and So So Dressmaking, um, I might have those wrong, but I'm close. So I'll, I'll list them up above. Um, but it's Jen and Charlene, and they're hosting this So Recreate the Look, where you um, are inspired by a ready-to-wear look or something you've seen on the streets or in the stores, and um, they encourage you to recreate it, whether that's exactly or you're inspired by it and you kind of do your own take on it, which is what I've done. Um, that's what I used, that's what I did for the Wilder gown. So I'll throw my inspiration shot up here. Um, I'm not gonna show you, I'm gonna give you a sneak peek of my Wilder gown because I can't, well, I can, but the reveal date is tomorrow. So I don't wanna reveal the entire dress today. I'm gonna wait till tomorrow. Um, so I'll, I'll show you the full dress um, next week. So that was the second thing that I made. And the third thing that I made was the Laura dress from Rebecca Page Patterns. This is the first garment I've ever made from Rebecca Page. They have several patterns that I'm interested in. So I figured I'd start with something that's super easy. It's the cocoon style dress. It's got dropped shoulders. It's just got a scoop neck. It's got a high low hem and it comes in three different lengths. It's got a top, a tunic and a, and a mini length. I extended the length because I, I don't like dresses that hit higher than right at my knee. So I extended the length and I'll do a separate um, review video on that, but it was really quite simple. Um, you use French seams throughout it and it's really nicely made. And I made that in the lovely Ankara fabric that I got from Oya's Girl. Um, she sent that to me as a lovely, like thoughtful birthday gift. Um, I was really surprised and um, really humbled that she thought of me um, and sent that to me. So um, the fabric is a purple and orange um, Ankara, and you'll see that in um, the video that I show the dress in. Um, like I said, I'll, I'll get more in detail in that in a review video. And that's about it. That's all I've made for the week, which, you know, <laughs> three garments in one week is, is not bad. I admit that. Um, I, for some reason, um, the last couple of months, though, I've been on a roll and I've had more than that to share usually on a Friday sews. Um, so, yeah, I'm happy with that. All right, so my plans for this upcoming week, um, let's see, let's walk through it. So I've bought a lot of fabric over the last couple of weeks, so um, it hasn't all arrived yet. So I will have a pattern haul video coming up soon. But with that, there were a couple of dresses that I have patterns for already that I'm really like interested in getting those made. And so for August, whether it's this coming week or at some point in August, I am definitely gonna make the valley dress from Pattern Fantastique. I've already made the top. I'll insert a picture of that here. Um, and I kind of mixed um, a, like a lilac linen and a really fun print. Um, so I've made the top, but I wanna make the dress. I'm really anxious to make the dress. And in the shirt, the, the linen was a little bit heavier than I would have liked for those puffy sleeves. I would like for them to be a little bit more fluid. So um, I bought some fabric that I think is gonna work really well and I'll show that um, as soon as I get it. 
The other dress that I'm really eager to make is the Marcel dress. So I am getting more comfortable wearing sleeveless tops. I mean, before I moved here to Miami, you wouldn't catch me outside my house in anything sleeveless, but I am getting more comfortable in it. Um, like I said, I've made, I've got two of these Nova midi dresses now. I made the wide strap maxi, which I'll do a review on that pretty soon. Um, I need to do some adjustments to it. So I wanna wait until I'm, I have time to get those adjustments made so that the um, straps don't keep falling off my shoulders. And once I do that, then I'll walk you through what it looked like before the adjustments, what it looked like after the adjustments. But I love that dress. Um, and I know once I get the adjustments done, it's gonna be a favorite. Um, I have also done the Caladium jumpsuit from Katamiya. And that one has big wide stripes, uh, straps. Um, so I'm getting more comfortable doing that. So I really think that the Marcel dress from Chalk and Notch, I have the pattern, I've got it printed. Um, it's just so beautiful because it's got really interesting and unique details. You don't have, you know, so many patterns. There's like other companies that do something that's close enough that it's almost the same thing. The Marcel pattern is a, is a you know, a strap, a wide strap like maxi dress, but they have the, the ruffled panels are along the side and they don't go all the way around. So I just thought that was a neat uh, feature. So I want to make that and I bought some fabric specifically for that one. So both of those dresses, I bought fabric in mind for those dresses. So they're not going to just sit in my stash forever. Um, the other thing that I have planned for the month of August, I'm going to continue my pattern stash series. Now I got some feedback on the last one that I thought was very valid feedback. And um, one of the viewers asked me to please, please, please um, show my images, whether it's the pattern or me wearing the garment for more than, I think the default in my um, video editing app is four seconds. So um, I tend to talk obviously longer than that about the pattern. So I 100% I agree with her. Um, I get frustrated when people flash a picture and then when they keep talking out, I've already forgotten what it looked like. Um, so I definitely am planning on um, increasing the amount of time that I show the images for the um, patterns that I'm talking about. But I bring that up because I'm going to continue my pattern stash series and I need, but it was, man, it was a lot more work than I expected it to be. So, um, I need to do a lot more preparation work because that lasted a lot longer than it should have. So I think I ended up taping, filming for like an hour and 20 minutes and I got it down to 49 minutes. That's still too long. I know like I can listen to something for that long. Um, but I know not everybody, I, I know a lot of people like to, you know, plow through videos. So I definitely need to do more pre-prep work so that I can like zoom through the things that I need to talk about. So I'll get better at that for the next episode, I promise. Um, so that is um, in my August plans. Somebody requested for me to do a tutorial or maybe just a video on how I use Trello to organize my patterns. So I thought that would be a, um, a great idea. Um, and I know that Trello is fairly easy to use, but the honest truth is the first time I tried using it last year, it wasn't all that intuitive. So once you get it, then it's easy. But it's that getting it that takes a minute. So I definitely um, can see how, you know, that could be overwhelming. So I'll do like, it sh it's not going to be a long video, but I'll do a video on that um, in case anybody's interested. And then I have some hashtag challenges that I'm going to participate in in the month of August. So the first one is obviously the one that I'm starting and I talked about it last week. I've put it up on Instagram. It sounds like there's going to be some people following. Now, I don't have any prizes to give away. It's just for fun. So you can interpret this however works for you. Um, the hashtag is so my birthday, S-E-W my birthday. And the thought behind it is that you find a pattern or whether it's a vintage pattern 
or you find inspiration from, from a fashion from the year that you were born, and then you recreate it again using your interpretation so it doesn't have to be an exact replica it can be inspired by i was thinking you could even like because a lot of fashions could look dated and if you if that's not your thing then maybe you take an element from something that was popular that year so i know like in my year dresses with like um low uh, hanging belts with like big wide square belt buckles um, were in fashion. So if I didn't want to recreate a dress, then I could maybe take that belt buckle and use it somehow. So just like think about, kind of think outside of the box. If the garments from your birth year aren't your style, then maybe there's an element from it that you can take or get even more creative and use the birth year of somebody that's special to you, whether it's your parents or your children or a sibling or whatever. So I, I just think it'll be a lot of fun. So I'm definitely going to be participating in that. And I'm probably, I've got a pattern. So I know I showed some last week. I showed the paper patterns like my mom wore in that fashion show. I showed the YSL Mondrian dress. Um, and I, that one's a possibility still. I don't know that I would do it in the primary colors. I might pick some other colors um, just because the primaries aren't necessarily my thing, but um, I do like the, the color blocking from that dress. But I also found another dress from, uh, apparently uh, Mary Quant was huge in the year that I was born. So I'm thinking of maybe um, there was a dress that she did for Twiggy that's just an A-line dress with buttons down the front. I'll show a picture of that up here. Um, and I thought that was really pretty. And I liked the button detail. I liked the collar of it. So that's a possibility. I'm not sure yet. Um, so that one is coming up soon. And then the um, then there's two more um, hashtag challenges that I wanna participate in. One is hosted by the Instagram um, uh, channel, in by the Instagram account at so over 50. If you're not following them, you absolutely should. They do a fantastic job of keeping the community aware of what's going on in the community. And although they, um, they're really supporting and promoting sewists over 50. Um, they're not size restrict or age restricted. So they welcome people of all ages. So I, d I definitely encourage you to go and check them out. One of the things I love about their channel or their, <laughs> their account is that they have um, dedicated uh, stories. I forget what you call them, like at the top of their grid, the little circles. And they list all the challenges that they've been made aware of for the sewing community at, for a given month. So if you're interested to know what hashtag challenges are going on for the month of August, go check out Sew Over 50 and on the top of their grid is a, <coughs> excuse me, is a circle for August challenges. So out of those challenges, um, one of them is hosted by them and it's called Sew 50 Sustainable Sewing. And they're encouraging you to use fabric from your stash, you know, um, uh, you know, bits and pieces that you've thrown away that you thought you weren't gonna use, maybe go into that pile that you were gonna use to make a closet core poof. Um, so I definitely wanna do that. And I have been all over Pinterest um, pinning inspiration shots for doing some kind of a patchwork garment. And um, if you aren't already watching Kim Gaddy, she has a channel on YouTube and um, she is a quilter that's recently started making garments and she does really impeccable work, first of all, but she made a patchwork top not that long ago that really inspired me and I've had doing something patchwork related on my list since I saw that. And so I'm really, I'm really inspired to do something patchwork. I think I have something in mind, but I don't want to say it yet until I really like nail down my plans. But, um, so, and I have the whole month of August to do it. So that's so, so 50 sustainable sewing. And then the last, the third one that I'm going to do is by, um, an Instagram channel called Chatterstitch. 
and she just reached 2,000 viewers, 2,000 subscribers, followers. Man, I can't talk today. Um, and so she's doing a hashtag that will have prizes that's called So Your Thanks, S-E-W, Your Thanks. And the thought behind that is just to really celebrate all bodies. So she's encouraging people to post pictures of themselves in sleeveless garments, um, strappy garments, things like that, um, to show off like all of our beautiful imperfections. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna participate in that. Um, I've started, like I said, started making quite a few sleeveless garments. So I think that that's something that I can play with. Um, and I think that's about it sewing wise for me right now. I'm sure I'm missing some stuff, but that's enough. Um, I am still working on knitting, so I haven't picked it up in a couple of weeks, but I, um, we're going away for the weekend, so I usually bring knitting with me when we go on a road trip. So I'm gonna pick my um, Fabulous Abacus shawl back up and start knitting on that again, and I'm eager to get some progress made on that. So that's probably the main thing I'm gonna work on over the weekend because we will be out of town and I'll be away from my sewing machine. Um, so I'm excited to get some work done on that. Um, and that's about it sewing-wise. Uh, Life-wise, my husband and I have been talking about, excuse me, um, buying a house. And <laughs> I just turned 55. He's about to turn 58. Neither one of us have ever owned a house. We've always rented. We're both very nomadic by nature. So um, when I was a child, we had moved, gosh, I don't even know. I've lived in nine different states over my lifetime, and I counted up the times that I've moved um, when I moved here. This is my 18th move in my 55 years. Um, the six years that we lived at our last place is the longest I've ever lived under one roof in my entire life. So I'm used to moving. So the thought of buying a house just to sell it <laughs> Um, when, you know, I wasn't sure, like I've never, I don't know, I don't know what it is, but I've never been anywhere where I felt like this is where I'm going to put roots down, dig my heels in and never go. And for some reason in my head, that's the mentality that I've got to have before I'm ready to buy a house. I know that's silly. Anyway, so, uh, we're ready though. And we really love it here in Florida. Um, we're exploring different cities in Florida, so it's not necessarily that we're going to buy a house here in Miami. Um, we're actually going over to the west coast of Florida over the weekend and um, doing some house hunting over on that side of the coast or that side of the state over the weekend. Um, so that's my weekend plans. Now we can't, we're probably not going to move or, you know, buy a house until the end of the year. Um, but we're, we're ready to start like doing our, our research and figuring out, do we want to build? Do we want to buy something that's already made? Like, what are we going to do? So that's the fun for, for me, for my life. Um, that's about all I got going on right now. <laughs> um, so anyway, that's Friday shows. I look forward to spending, um, I, spending the rest of my evening um, going and uh, binge watching other Friday Sews videos. Um, and yeah, that's about all I got. I hope that wherever you are, that you have wonderful weather and that you get some sewing in, unlike me. And I'd love it if you would participate in the comments. Tell me, have you made any of the things that I mentioned? Are, are any of those things on your list? What do you have planned? What are your upcoming plans? I'd love to know. Thank you so much for joining me. I will talk to you again soon and have a great weekend. Bye.